Thursday's here. It's another edition of Better Know Ascent. Today we have Zach Zorn, ZZ8, as I like to call you. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> I like to come up with some nicknames. You know what I mean? For Henry, I like to call him Foghorn, Cleghorn. Do you get that? Yeah. I've heard that one a couple times. Yeah, like Foghorn, Leghorn. Yeah. For you, I like ZZ8. Why is that? Well, your name is Zach Zorn. Your number's eight. Not quite ZZ Top, but ZZ8. Sounds good. I think it works. <laughs> Zach, man, how was, uh, tell me about your favorite part of the summer. Probably going home to Yellowknife and being at my cabin for two weeks. That was the most enjoyable part of my summer. What goes on at the cabin? A lot of fishing, sitting around the fire, hanging out with the family. Yeah, that sounds like a good time over in Yellowknife. Let's get it going with uh, a returning feature here on Better Know Ascent. It's tic-tac-toe. Now, last year, it was you along with your coaches. But this year, you have three, so we can do it with all three. Joe, Matt, and Brandon. Now, you're on the bench for this situation. Okay. And it's overtime. You need a goal to win. You guys get the goal. But how do you see it going down, and where do you see those coaches playing? How do you see tic-tac-toe going down in that situation? I think I see Matt skating down the wall, uh, throwing some pretty ugly sauce over to Joe. An ugly one. Yeah. But it, but it makes it. Wobbly sauce, yeah. Right right to the middle to Joe. Joe takes it through the middle, and then Shazi goes to the net hard and bangs in the rebound. Okay. Nice garbage goal off the rebound. Yeah. There we go. So Matt coming down the down the boards, he sauce it like a little flutter pass over to over to Joe, but he yeah. handles it, gets the puck on the net, and Brandon buries the rebound. Game over. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's tic tac toe this week. Brought to you by Zach Zorn of your Merit Centennials. I want to. I'm not sure if I got to you this uh, about this question last year, but uh, there seems to be a lot of superstitious fellows in hockey and sports. Would you consider yourself one of them? Yeah, I feel like. Almost everyone probably. Okay. Well, can you can you share with us your weirdest ritual that you personally do? Or maybe one that you've seen before? Uh I don't let my stick after I tape my stick, I don't let the tape touch the ground before I go down the ice. I see. So you do you lean it against the wall or do you hold it so that the stick like the tape isn't touching anything? I lean it against the wall okay. with the tape in the air. The blade right. in the air. Right, with the blade in the air. Yeah. All right, so it can't touch the ground. Yeah. So far, it's been working. You're one of the leading scorers on the Merit Centennials. It seems to be working, yeah. <laughs> now, other than that, have you seen some weird ones in your day? Like, even one that you would think is like, whoa, that's a little weird. Um, yeah. Uh, Nick Fidanz, uh he used to bang his shin pads right before he'd go onto the ice. And it just, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. So he would bang his shin pads? With his stick. This isn't the first time Fidanz has been brought up in this feature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've also heard of Fidanza putting his stick in a garbage can Yeah, that, before the game starts. That happened a lot, too. So he could get those garbage goals. Mm -hmm. So he would, he would have a, different, a few different ones then. So he would bang his shin pads, and what did he say that that helped with? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just fired him up a little bit? Yeah, I think so. Just got him ready to go. This would be your final year on the sense. Yeah. So, so far... What do you think is the best uh, experience that you've had as a member of the Merit Centennials? Maybe your best hockey memory, like in-game memory. In-game memory would be last year, Game 7 against Penticton, when I put us up one nothing in uh, the first period. Okay, I remember that, Game 7, because I went to that game. So you guys got the first goal in that game, yeah. and I remember going to that, and I wasn't even inside the building yet when my dad texted me. So you have, a, you have a fan over in Toronto. I told him about the sense and stuff, and now he starts listening to the games, and he loves it. So he was texting me. He said, goal! I'm like, holy cow, the game already started? And, you know, I was telling my friend Bobby, I'm like, I think they scored. And he's like, really? All right. I don't even think it started yet. So, you know, we go in, and sure enough, it's one nothing. But as soon as I got there, that's when the first goal from them went in, from the Vs. So I feel like, I don't know, man, maybe I should have just left. Yeah. <laughs> it was a heck of a run last year, but that's a great memory. So you got that first goal. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Game seven. All right. So this is a feature that we're continuing this year, and it's where the sense take us, the fans, inside the dressing room just for a moment, just to let us know a word or a phrase that only you guys use among yourselves. Can you let us know a, a word or a phrase that only the sense use? 
They say bro a lot. Now, do they that do they mean that in the traditional bro sense, or does there, is there anything else attached to it? It's more like yeah, bro, or how's it going, bro? Okay, so fans, if you see the sense out and about, it's good to call them bro. That's what's been going on lately. Just a lot of broing. Yeah. Now I saw a guy with a shirt that said, "Don't bro me before you know me." You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you don't want to call someone bro too soon. That's true. How late does it take for a rookie to be comfortable with calling one of the veterans bro? Pretty fast if you're Mon- Munzee. Okay. Monroe. Yeah. If you're Monroe. Yeah. So he got that, he got that um, privilege pretty early in the year. Yeah. But yeah. other one, they have to earn their, earn their uh, chops. They have to cut their teeth before they're able to call everybody bro. Would uh, you say that's true? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, I guess. Why not? I don't know. How does how does the rookie <laughs> how does rookie court work? Now are you are you uh, a part of like one of the lawyers? I guess when it comes to rookie court, when they have to pay those fines. Yeah, twenties are on the stand. Okay, yeah. so uh, it's kind of like what you determine. If you determine that one of the rookies made a violation, they have yeah. to pay up. Yeah. Okay. I, Can you tell us about like you don't have to name any names, but what's like a violation that somebody did? Being late. Being late. Yeah. If they're late true. to practice. That's a fine. Yeah, late late to warm up, something like that. Now, is there anything that uh, all these fines are working up to? Like, what are these rookies paying into? Christmas presents. Oh, Christmas presents. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Christmas presents, courtesy the rookies of the Merritt Centennials, and then you guys have, like, a secret Santa or something like that? For uh, coaches and Kim. The rookies pay into that, and the coaches are the ones that reap the benefits yeah. in the end. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, too, about, uh, I was thought, thinking about this question as well. You know, when you come in here, you have billet parents. You've been living with your billet parents for a few years now. Who's more strict, your real parents or your billet parents? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one, huh? Probably my... <laughs> <laughs> it's like he doesn't want to admit it right now. Yeah. I mean, they're not... Both of my par- my real parents and my billet parents aren't that strict, but, I mean... There's rules to be followed here. and Without that, there's chaos, man. Exactly. Without rules. Yeah. Who's who's a better cook? Billet, billet parents or real parents? You want to talk about that? <laughs> you can't ask that. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll move on. That's enough of that. Hey, how about uh, Jerry Dingleberry, man? I mean, this guy. <laughs> this guy's the team fan captain, and I know you had uh, some great experiences with him over the years. Can you share anything with us? What's your favorite uh, Jerry Dingleberry memory before you get past this year? Something crazy that he did. It would be uh, when we won last year in game four against West Kelowna and Jerry Dingleberry came out onto the ice with his shirt off and joined in the team huddle and over when we won that game. I remember that. Yeah, yeah he took off his shirt. And some people didn't know who he was at that point. They're like, wait a second, there's a streaker out there. Yeah. Well, no, he had his pants on. So Yeah, he did. (laughs) (laughs) He didn't go in the buck, at least. At least he kept his pants on. Yeah, Jerry Dingleberry, man, he's, that's great to see him out there, like, with all that energy. I mean, after you guys won, I mean, who else would be allowed out there without a shirt on? You know, only him. Only Dingleberry. (laughs) You know, last year we talked about um, your best uh, cheat meal. I was interested in what you guys have on your off days. What do you have before a real game? What does Zach Zorn like to eat? I like to stick to chicken and rice and some vegetables and um, hot sauce. Now, is there a cutoff time when you have that meal? Like, how close to the game is too close to get something in your belly? I usually eat my pregame meal three hours before the game. Three hours before? Yeah. Okay. And that gives it time to digest and all that. This is just what you got to know, man, because I got to get some pregame meals in me, you know, for those beer league games. Prepare. Exactly, you know it. There's usually a post-game meal, and it just consists of, you know, adult beverages. But that's about it. (laughs) Well, it's time to see if we can make him laugh. The sense. See if I can make Zach Zorn laugh. Did I make you laugh last year? Do you remember? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't understand it. Ah, you didn't get it. Okay. Well, I'll try and tell you a different one this year. You might appreciate this. When I first moved to Merritt, I wanted to get myself some land. I wanted to be a landowner. Bought myself some land. Now, I think you can attest to this. The people in Merritt are pretty friendly. When I first got myself some land here in Merritt, I remember my neighbor coming up to me, knocking on my door. I opened the door and I said, hey, how's it, how's it going there? He's like, hey there, friend, I'm Mitch. I'm your neighbor. Nice to meet you. Welcome to town. 
And I said, well, look at this. Look at this, you know. Growing up in Toronto, I never once met my neighbor. Not once. And here you are, introducing yourself to me the first day I'm here. And he says, well, you better get used to it because that's how it is around here. And just to show you some more, we're going to have a welcome wagon party tonight. And you're invited. I said, wow, that sounds cool. What goes on on these welcome wagon parties? It's like, well, I'm not going to lie to you. A little bit of drinking, a little bit of fighting, a little bit of fornicating. No, just for the kids, so they know fornicating is when two adults come together and they make a meal. Like, they put in each other's ingredients and they make a meal. Anyway, mm-hmm. just so they have context. He said, drinking, fighting, fornicating. So I said, well, that sounds like a crazy party, man. You can count me in. What time should I be there? And he says, oh, it don't matter, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good. Delayed laughter, but I got it. I think that's a win. Overtime win. Because I think that was pretty delayed there. I'll consider that an overtime win. I did get the extra point, but it took a little extra time. (laughs) For it to sink in. (laughs) All right, that was uh, Zach Zorn. Zach, we're going to end it with a request. We get you uh, the last word this year. Sense request. What do you want to hear? Green light. Green light. Okay. I know what that means. That's the sense winning song. Right? Yes. That is the Sense winning song. Every time the Sense get a win, that's what that's what they like to play in the dressing room. Now I've I've been I've had a beer league game just after you guys had a game. And it was after you guys won. And I'm happy to say we were the dressing room right beside you guys. So we heard all that all the stuff that you guys were playing and it pumped us up and it caused us to win that game that night too. So it's a good song. It is a good song. Pitbull green light and it means a sense win. And it's right here on Q one oh one. And that's Zach Zorn. This week's better know a Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me.